as Sierra Leone's general elections draw closer, all political parties are urged to launch their manifestos as soon as possible so that voters can make informed decisions on election day. Well, this morning, we to take a closer look at the implications of the situation for the upcoming elections in the studio, we have Andrew Lavalli, who is the executive director, IGR, and Marcela Samba, CC, who is the executive director again, CGG. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, Marcella. Thank you for joining us this morning. You know, a um, few days ago we were speaking to political analysts as well, and the word he used was that he said this nafiti in a local palanche that up to this day we have 46 days to the elections now, and we do not have you know the manifestos on which citizens can make informed decisions. Let me start with you. Do you still agree with him that this nafiti? <laughs> well, I will say yes and no. Okay. Um, in the no parties, how many citizens actually look at manifesto? Uh -huh. What we are trying to do is to make sure manifestos are relevant in our body politics. So we have a situation where we have much, much of uh, ethno-regional balloting rather than policy-based voting. So what we've been doing over the past years, I mean civil society in general, is to make election meaningful by letting Sierra Unions understand the meaning of voting, how voting is important for their lives, how you have to vote for water, you have to vote for the economy, you have to vote for youth employment. Um, you cannot put, you know, Mendes in one batch, say vote green, you put chimneys in one group and they say vote red. It will never take us forward. So on that ground, I will say no. On the grounds of people who believe, and that's the critical mass of citizens, who believe that uh, manifestos really are important to make informed decisions. As, as a matter of fact, if you don't have a manifesto, what do you campaign on? So you, actually, you'll be, you'll be trying to prick on, uh, pre on uh, some primordial uh, you know, sentiments of citizens. Uh, so you have populism, you have fake news bandied around, um, you have hollow statements bandied around in the absence of manifestos. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the purpose of a manifesto, it, it actually gives a broad uh, framework of a party's platform. How do you intend to, to take the country forward? Because election is really about, it's, it's not, likely not about where do I stand in relation to power, the next, the, the next person that is coming, but how do I benefit from services? How do we improve the delivery of institutions? So those are the decisions we always take after every five years uh, for in an election. So. I would say yes or no in, uh, in, in that regard. As an assessment, Marcella, again, you would answer if this nafiti to, to our country, and then you have to speak to the issues of citizens being interested in the manifesto itself. I want us to drop the conversation around citizens being interested. Mm -hmm. We want to live in a society where our leaders know better than the people and not the other way around. Because leadership presupposes direction. They are going to give us the direction for the next five years. There is a balance that says that when you, you, you fail to plan, you're actually planning to fail. There is no way somebody will be stepping up in this day and age. We all know what's happening in the world over, yet alone the real issues that are happening in Sierra Leone. As we see it, we see the manner in which our Leones is plummeting. And how, for example, would somebody want to take power in a country of this nature without giving us a sound direction as to how we can uh, uh, um, revive, you know, our currency, for example. There are a number of issues that citizens are waiting for to hear. So in actual fact, if we say citizens are not voting on policies, citizens are not voting on issues, so um, our politicians all of a sudden become complacent and we are moving into elections without manifesto, we've totally missed the point as a country. It's not even part of our, of our political culture. A democratic culture since renewal in 1996 have shown tremendous support for manifestos, meaning that we need a plan. And you see, citizens' expectation. Let me tell you, the whole euphoria that is happening. Yes, we indeed we have a critical mass who are green already in Sierra Leone, but we have an informed few who really want to wait to hear. And it's that informed few that make the decision. But the critical mass who really vote on ethnic lines. After the euphoria, they begin to say, "Ah, what's happening?" 
And that's why we need good leadership. Because at the end of the day, yes, they would love their political party, but they have to live in the next five years. Um, the, the, the Institute of Governance Reform lead, led the campaign on My Votes, My Life. It is our life. Mm -hmm. Our life for the next five years, we are going to hand over a social contract in the hands of politicians. What do you have for us? I think we, um, yesterday I mentioned on a platform similar to this, I said we are demanding the manifestos. We are really demanding the manifestos. Mm. Because how, for example, would you put forward a campaign team? without having a manifesto. That's where we start missing it. Because the campaign team must mirror what's in the content of your manifesto. Let's take, for example, if a political leader has seen um, the need for, to address issues regarding health care, because Sierra Leoneans are dying of disease that are otherwise curable. Mm -hmm. So we want to ensure that we, we really revive our health care system. So when we begin to see the people in the campaign team, the lineup that the political leaders put forward, then we begin to mirror that, yes, this makes sense. We really know this as a medical professional. We really know this as a health professional or community medic that has done tremendous success even in difficult communities. And then we begin to make sense as to, to how such issues will be addressed. But more okay. importantly, and that's the last point I would want to mention in this round, how, for example, will they get the money to finance the plan? Because our, our pattern of revenue generation is so limited. If it's not as, everything is about extraction and collection. So it's not about collecting revenue at Watiki, it's about mining that is not mining without value addition, um, agriculture without value addition. So how would you get the money? Because say for example, if we want to ensure that these plans, let me take the new direction, 2018 to 2023, the new direction has foremost as its flagship education. 21% of the budget mm -hmm. was taken. It means that government only has 79% of the national budget to service other demands. And so that 79% to service other demands, it's a huge, it's a really big task. It's not enough. In reality, it's not enough. So the debt scheming of other sectors. So where is the money going to come from? And I think in the coming days, our political leaders, thankfully, the Electoral Commission for Sierra Leone has put out a notice to say provisionally 30 of them has gone through uh, um, the, the nomination process. So we are expecting to see what the plans are for Sierra Leoneans in the next five years. You know, it was on Monday we were speaking to um, Lucien Nicolon from um, the PPLC and he mm. made mention that, you know, when, when the nomination process was ongoing together with the ECSL, of course, there were political parties, well, those who want to be president and hopefully one day who could not even speak English. And it bothers me that, you know, we have to sit here and uh, demand a manifesto from somebody who is a political aspirant. And again, simple English was not been able to communicate at the, the at ECSL. What do you have to say to political <laughs> parties who get to nominate even people who, we, we, we just have to say it, we, we, we do not see much of them when we, we, we even look at them. You see, I, I really don't want to use English as the basis okay. for, for knowledge creation. But, but to be honest mm -hmm. with you, that's a language of instruction. Yeah. And that is the language in which policies are, are, are formed. And so it's really um, important. But, but um, that, that's the conversation we are having. Because somebody says to me, one of the political leaders anyway, Masala, you've been in this process for too long. We, you know that we'll give the manifestos anyway. Mm. But the holy thing is that, and we need to point out the question you just asked, when you are identifying people to run, the political party itself must have a manifesto because you are saying, among all of us in this political party, we believe X, Y, and Z will be able to deliver and lead on this mission. So how did you, nomin you, did you send them for nomination anyway? So the political party manifesto presupposes that it, 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 it should be an embodiment of the political party ideology. 
that's a problem too mm. because our parties are not ideologically based <laughs> in Sierra Leone. <laughs> and so until we begin to get this conversation, it's important because we we'll bring in candidates who do not they have would not have even read the local government act. So they don't know the roles and responsibility expected of them. And so we have local councils who are supposed to be the development engine of the country. We find out that local councils have been very unproductive because we need the most innovative and energetic minds in the communities to see how they could turn local opportunities home, which, we, which the, the law calls home source revenue. Mm. They need to turn local opportunities into the realities for citizens in their communities. So you see why it is important that such a, the thinking behind uh, 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 manifestos are very important. Okay, let, let, let's come to, yes, you want yes, to ask quickly, Kano, Yes, quickly, yes, on the, the, the very the ground you're standing on, should English, the, the art of communication, be a criteria or should it be left out? You know, interestingly, we have to be very pragmatic. The reality is, um, as Marcella said, um, English language should not count. But when you say it's a language of instruction, this goes way beyond that. In, in the day and age of governance, you have to understand complex policy documents that are written in English. So it's, you, you just have to understand, not only understand English, but you need to have some level of education. The thing that schooling does, schooling teaches you to, 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 to uh, organize your thoughts in a certain way. So, for example, if you, if you, you study economics, if you study uh, chemistry, you organize your thoughts, your, your reasoning, your deduction um, in a certain way. So that's what education does. It doesn't mean that if you are uneducated, you are least important, you are not intelligent, but the tools that you need to manage modern state requires education. I'm not just saying education not mediocre education, very sound education. Mm -hmm. So it's not by mistake when people in England say, you need to go to eating school before you become, uh, you, you, I mean, so you, before you, you take certain positions. If you go to the US, you need to go to a certain school at a certain grade level before you, I mean, so mediocrity, I don't know if it was Socrates, uh, the, the, the philosopher king principle that says until philosophers become kings and kings belong, become philosophers, um, uh, so it, 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 it will be difficult to govern the state. But to, to the question of manifesto, which is really key, yeah. I think uh, we should say, pay tribute to the emergence of the Sierra Leonean civic public, yeah. uh, especially in this day and age of social media. A lot of people are now trying to, waiting to see what is going to be in the manifestos. Mm -hmm. And so political parties, <laughs> rightfully or wrongfully, they I don't want to use the word timid. They know that manifestos will come under a barrage of scrutiny. So they actually need to get it right. And I spoke to a few of them on both camps, and they mm -hmm. said, so why are you delaying your manifesto? Their response was, uh, they're not declare campaign yet. But manifestos to me are just, um, they are the ritual part of campaigns. Mm -hmm. But with or without manifesto, you should be giving your policy Absolutely. sound bites okay. anyway. Okay. So I have seen on social media, um, so some of the things Samora is saying about, I want, this is what I want to do about mm -hmm. education, this is what mm -hmm. I want to do about the economy. We expect all of that to be rolled into one single document called the manifesto. In, in 2018, um, as she mentioned, my votes, my life, you know, led this um, you know, awareness about manifestos and what the people should demand for, and even IGR and other partners were asking political parties and politicians to commit themselves to declaring their assets. Exactly. In 2018, manifestos were only launched in February. Yes. Both yes. main political parties launched their manifestos in February and the elections mm -hmm. were in March. So the technical <laughs> bit for them is, can I launch a manifesto when campaign has not been declared. Mm -hmm. But you're campaigning anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so, so you can go... So does that bring us back to the question about politicians, you know, not taking the people serious? You're not believing that people vote on manifesto? Mm -hmm. Because I could imagine, we've seen the pages, how many pages of the New Direction manifesto and the APC manifesto the last time, and how many people have the time to go to it and understand what are the critical issues and what are the issues? You have to come out with biometer to gauge what are some of the promises and let the public understand. 
is it that politicians or the political parties are really not thinking that manifestos play a part in people deciding on who they should vote for? You know, I, I sat in a class with some of the people in politics on both sides. They're very brilliant. They're very intelligent. They know, they know that this thing, when we say people do not vote on policy, is a facade. Mm. On 2018, Bill's biggest trump card was education, yes. and it yeah. caught up with young people. Samora is talking quite a lot about fixing the economy. Huh? The economy, the Leon is depreciating every day, and a lot of people want to see, what are your ideas about fixing it? So they know, they understand. So but nowadays, if, even if you, you publish a, a million page document, it's, be, it's very easy for people to just word check what is in there, what is in there, mm. within two hours, and they will tell you, this is where they stand. Manifestos will come under critical scrutiny, serious scrutiny, in 2023 compared to 2020, 2018. Mm. In 2018, when we launched the My Vote My Life campaign, we did what we call Acknowledge Attitude and Practice Survey. Um, it was 45% of citizens. We know that was, there was a feel-good factor in that response of citizens who say, I vote on the base of policy. But at the end of the election, after the presidential debate, when we asked people, did you vote? Did the debate convince you to vote? You had about 12% of citizens that said yes. Actually, debate made me to make my decision. So you, we have people, as Marcella was saying, in, in fact, every day, the more people de become disillusioned by both sides, mm. that, that group becomes bigger. Yeah. It's the more people become entrenched on one side, um, it becomes difficult for people to get, uh, you know, to convince either way. We just concluded a study um, where a lot of young people are saying that they, they, they believe that the party they win, the party they support, will fix their problem. Mm. So it's difficult to fix those, to, to, to change those views because they ardently believe in the party they support. But you have that critical mass. In the last election, it was about 30%. Is it that we already know the problems? The, 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 when you read the manifestos of both political mm. parties, the, the, the audience or, or names just change, but almost the same problem. Social issues, electricity, water health, and all of it. Is it that we already know the problem and people, like you did with the citizens' manifesto, specific things that people want the political parties to speak to? So what we are now talking about is hollow statements in manifesto, something we call vague promise. Mm -hmm. So in the last biometer, we found out there about 40 of those promises out of 536 promises were vague. If you say, I want to depoliticize student union, what does that mean? How do you measure that, depoliticization of student union? So as opposed to saying, I want to increase youth employment from the current 20% to 50%, and we can actually count. I'll make sure my cabinet is diverse, and what that means, no one region will get above 30% of my next uh, you know, appointment, not just cabinet. So those are the things that we really want to see in manifestos. And that's why um, I'm, the uni Women's Manifesto is coming out today. today yeah. uh, the Citizens Manifesto was out three weeks ago, mm -hmm. where people are making pointed demands. So we, 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 we want to see how you can declare asset, pub asset publication. I'm happy to hear Samora Kamara uh, talking about that on BBC uh, just a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but the reality is, you don't have to wait until you win election. Mm. What the Citizens Manifesto is basically saying, you know, prove to us that you can provide ethical leadership. And by demonstrating that, it means even at the time you are being nominated, you have to show that you, you aim for ethical leadership. Um, so by declaring your, 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 your asset. Assets, yeah. And the asset declaration, with all due respect, one of the things we really, we really need to push as a campaign, is that policy of the ACC, mm -hmm. the, the, that, that thing about the act, the, the way the act, the, the way it's couched, the asset declaration clause, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it takes politicians off the hook. Uh, so, and where the ACC act reviewed, it wasn't, it no, wasn't no. changed. So, but it's a mark, so it's more of an excuse than a reason. There is nothing stopping you. The ACC act does not stop you yeah, from declaring your asset public. Mm -hmm. So it's more of an excuse than a reason. So, so you hide under that. I'm declaring my asset, but it's not seen, seen by no one. Mm. Uh, but it's 
it's called declaration. So that's why the Citizen Manifesto says publication. Hey, Marcella, quickly, um, facts that we already understand the issues, the economy, um, inclusiveness, and, and all of that. Is it safe to have, you know, um, town halls or have debates for politicians to speak to these issues rather than just pushing them to do manifestos which perhaps people will not even read or understand what they're saying? You see, Laman, I'll flip your question. So let's examine the void in the absence of manifestos and then it becomes reasonable why manifestos are necessary. They go to town halls, well, some of them are not town halls, but community spaces mm. we are supporters are gathered and some of the utterances some of the utterances are very very weird why because they don't have a message so you go to the the the, the audience you say things that you otherwise have processed and but we already know these issues marcella people in communities they, there is a citizens manifesto they want employment the young people people want access to health care they want water they want light these are the issues we, we see almost in every other manifesto. Fix the economy. You were talking about inflation earlier. Livelihood and, and the living standard now of every, people. In fact, I say everything is a priority right mm. now. Mm. That's why the manifesto for the political candidates, the, the presidential candidates, for example, um, would give us the top three issues that we should concentrate on because they'll not be able to do everything. And when they are, they are able to articulate the top three issues, they will be able to tell us how are they going to find money to finance those issues. And one of the things that politicians should say what you may, they are very influential people. They, are, should, be able, they should be able to inspire a country towards a vision. You know, I was... I was um, I was in, in high school when the NPRC um, um, took power. You know, citizens were tired with the political system. But one of the things I found very useful, even at that age, was the way citizens were inspired towards certain action. The cleaning of the city was voluntary. Young people started demonstrating their skills, and they started drawing beautiful pictures and visaging the Sierra Leone they wanted to see. And we, we, we are yearning for leaders who would inspire people towards community action. We are yearning for leaders who would look at what's happening in the global system and find solutions. They know that, yes, over the past five, ten years, we have known that the effect of disease in one country or in one place would go into either um, a pandemic and affect the entire world or otherwise affect the entire region as the case of Ebola. And uh, 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 fast forward COVID-19. We have seen what the war in Ukraine and Russia and the impact it has on the entire supply chain of the world. Now, we don't want leaders who come to power and they are using the very issues we are talking about, the problems. We know the problems. We all can articulate the problems. We want to see leaders who can now articulate the solutions that could drive all of us together and find uh, uh, um, you know, answers to our common challenges. You know, uh, let me go to you now. Um, and you know, in the IGA report that you, you published, another aspect of it was the fact that Sierra Leoneans needed, you know, lesser hands because the stronger hands from the Sierra Leone police w was, you know, an issue of concern. So, particularly, what would you expect in the manifesto in terms of the Sierra Leone police and what, you know, the people of this country have asked for? That's why we want manifestos to be out. Mm because we want to see ideas. I mean, as Marcella is saying, solution. What are your ideas on police reform? Because it's the same quality of policing that we've been having regime after regime. So what's, what is your idea about police reforms? How do you protect you know, the media? How do you protect civil society? How do you protect civic space? What, how do you promote police reforms? So if you look at the biometer we, we did, President Bill promised made 70 promises, and 40% of those promises, uh, 70 promises on governance, and only 40% of those promises are either being completed or made significant progress towards completion. So it means governance is a major issue. 
so you can, where you can see massive progress in things in areas such as lands, such as education, um, tourism, but the governance, where you have policing, where you have justice, and until and unless we get that right. So if you look at the MCC score, the MCC score is scoring well on many other indicators, but the, the indicator on state effectiveness, which is really where you have, um, of course, we're doing well on ruling justly and stuff like that, but the, a critical indicator on state effectiveness, which is at the heart of governance, it's what we want to see. And I normally say, um, passing the MCC is not just about the money, yeah. but passing the MCC is really about demonstrating that you are making progress in managing your own state. So, so to me, and one of the ways of demonstrating that is really passing your governance indicators. Because governance is one area where the state gives to citizens, demos star kratos. It gives to citizens the authority to citizens. So the state normally takes most of the authority to itself. So what is needed, when, when you say, uh, I will uh, reduce orders from above, it means we have a procedure where Lamran and I <coughs> have the same authority under the law. We, we have accorded the same rights under the law. So the more we, 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 we take, we see governance, more commitment, stronger commitment to governance, to democratic openness, the more we have a better state to manage. So that's why uh, I don't want to, to, to say, I don't want to be cynical mm. to say there is mo much more meaning to the delay in the, in the manifestos. Mm. But people are really curious to see what are your solutions. For example, water, the water crisis in Freetown. Yeah. The last time we checked the, in, in February, it was 52% of people in Freetown saying water is the biggest priority for them. In March, we did not do a survey, but that figure will be higher. It was not surprising to see when we looked at the biometer, the water sector only fulfilled 33% of its promises. So the more you do promises, especially promises that are catalytic and they deliver on those promises, and this is where manifestos are key, the more you change society. So it's really the broad and the grand vision of political parties that you want to see. So you and I from the civil society and the media, we start interrogating it. One of the things we're thinking about, um, even in, in, in uh, as part of the debates program, even in Nigeria, is to see how you can, we can get a group to critique. So even before election, we can actually critique. You mentioned something, Lamrana, mm -hmm. to say 60%, largely most of the manifestos are the same. Mm -hmm. So you can actually look at the manifesto and say, this APC manifesto, this SLP manifesto, whoever wins the election, 80% you agree on this. Yeah. There is no way to oppose yeah. because you agree on this. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can only disagree on strategy, but you agree on delivery of yes. these things. <laughs> and then we, you say these are the areas you, you, you differ and these are the hollow statements you may need to clarify, maybe in the process of the campaign. But we may need that analysis of those policy documents, Absolutely. which is really is a, is, is a mark of the platform. Marcella, we've seen the Jewel Bill. We've also had about, the, well, the 30% minimum quota for women in governance. And, you know, all of these are in writings, but in actual sense, in a day-to-day -day world, do you believe in all of these ideas? And is it actually fruitful? Are we seeing them into play? So, so let me pick on a convers the conversation that Andrew um, mentioned when he talked about how um, the political party manifestos, the sameness in the manifestos, mm -hmm. and I, this thing keeps coming up. And I normally tell people that when the party manifestos are the same, it shows we are talking about the same context, and it speaks to context reality. In fact, in 2018, that was how we got the, the, the um, cross party consensus for the GIWI, the Gender Equality and Women's Empowerment Law. We picked all the manifestos, and all of them were articulating that they would promote the minimum 30% quota. And so we said, All of you agree, so why are you dissenting now? And that was the, when it dawned on them that, yes, we made that commitment. Mm. So in the final analysis, we used the manifestos mm. to hold them accountable to push for the law. Because we cannot see you coming to the public now to say no, when in actual fact you made that promise. And us citizens, we picked that promise and ran with it to the point that we actually, yes, we didn't get what we want in the Kiwi law, but we are better off than where we were. And for us as advocates, we celebrate the small wins because it's like a ladder. 
right? If we get to the fourth tier, we want to get to the 10, we we'll get to the fourth, it's still progress. Now to your question, if um, including women or getting the GUI law is important, it is more than important. Yesterday I was getting an analysis, somebody posted it on Facebook, and that pricked my attention to go back and read the document. The, the, the post the person made was, 19%, um, um, it's only 19% of books written by women that are featured on Wikipedia. And the flip side is, you are missing 81% content. And don't just say 19%. No, you are missing 81% of the views mm. of society. And that's why it's important. Women, us, we constitute 52% of the population. Do we want to miss the views? In a society led by men, that is why you will not have water. That's where you will not have clean energy. That's where health would be a concern. Because most of, you talk to men, especially young men, you talk to them on a normal day, especially those that are strong and buoyant, they would hardly tell you they've gone to the hospital in the last five years. Maybe mm. what they would have done is to take a couple of Panadol or malaria tabs yes. or typhoid killers mm. along the line. But they will never tell you I've been admitted in the last five years, the young men. But the young women are in childbearing age. They have to go in and out of the hospital. They access health care more. They have readily available evidence and experience what it means to interface with the health care system. Tell me, when a woman becomes a, um, the minister of health, that's the informed perception. You begin to put those things as priority. You begin to visit the healthcare system to bring them up to standard. So it is important to ensure that we have that balance in society. Not just as a human rights question that I'm saying, we need to have more women on the table, but equally so as a development question, the perception of the other gender needs to come into the development discourse. And making sure that that happens is critical for any society. So yes, my dear, it is very important. Some of us are very excited to see the progress that's, that is being made. Mm. Um, we, I have, we have a woman and five <laughs> other I women know, who are right? running mates. You, you see, uh, that is helpful, you know? Many a times you go to the table and you find out that you are the only woman sitting on that table. It is not helpful, it is not healthy. When we have more women sitting on the table, we inspire the young girls. They begin to see that there is something to study for. There is something why I need to go to school. But if the society is so designed that the only thing for girls is to get pregnant and get married. You know, somebody once said to me, especially for our young women, they said, we don't have female youths. It's either, you know, a girl mm. or a child or a woman. So that is it. We don't have processes in the society for young women to take the stage because it's either being a child or getting into childbearing. And when they begin to aspire, they begin to see older women taking the space and younger women to taking the space, then our girls have something to yearn for. As we try to round up, Marcella, with you, we know you are very busy this morning, but um, you know, it's, it's less than 50 days to the election. We are here asking for manifestos and uh, we don't know yet when the political parties will launch their manifestos. They've done their nominations and all of that. What should the public look forward to? What are the critical issues uh, you're looking forward to as well to see in these manifestos if they come out? Two, two, two issues. First and foremost is what I started off talking about, the void. You see, political, when you see what's happening in public, you know that political parties are planning. But what do they do? They plan for violence. They are organizing their platform now. All those political parties, they have ventiloquists. They are organizing them who to attack and who not to attack. They are organizing them for hate speeches. They are organizing them to counter discourse in the public 
that will better their life and my life. Because many a times they see the people as an isolated few. No, we are all. When there is clean water, it benefits all of us. Yeah. So that is why we want to demand the manifestos to come out. This morning, we say I'm busy. We're actually going to launch the, the women's manifesto today. Mm -hmm. It means that citizens have aspiration. Yes, your supporters will be there. They will be dancing for you. Yes, but there is a crop of citizens who want to see their lives change. I keep saying poverty is no longer fashionable. Yeah. And that brings me to your question, what do we want to see? Number one is peace. We want to see a situation where the, the political leaders are able to act address this question of national cohesion. How are we going to bridge the gap? We cannot continue and leave such a country for the next generation. We are people from the north and the south, the east and the west begin to see themselves as opponents. No. And so politicians have come to feel the divide more. No. We want to see how, for example, they can be able to articulate policy statements that could bridge that divide. That is false. And in fact, making sure that peace becomes, because we fought for it anyway. Mm -hmm. A couple of our colleagues who were democratic activists, they died in the process. So we need to make it high on the agenda. The second is development. Poverty is no longer fashionable. You know, the world is moving towards digitalization. In fact, it's postmodernism. Uh, we are still grappling with slums. And if I let's look at the, 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 the five cities, every day you see people leaving their communities and building shanties. Yes. In fact, the host, I, I normally make a connection between street skating and street litigating. The street is a dump site because people are living in the streets. No. In this day and age, people deserve to live in good and affordable houses. Where are the plans to construct basic facilities? I think um, the last time I, 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 I checked was sometime in the 70s or the 80s <coughs> when we had the low-cost housing. Recent governments have not been able to invest in that. And you see, Lamana, when we fail to do that, what happens? We make politics too attractive. Yeah. People are just coming to enrich themselves. Because before you come, you need to think that I am coming to deliver X, Y, and Z. And if I don't have, you know, the, 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 the knowledge base and the aura to do that, I stay away. But now, the, the taxes we pay to a large extent is to fund the lifestyle of politicians. It is wrong. We have instituted local councils in 2004. We have said that central government should be lean. Lean central government. They should be able to, to, to break down the holes of over-centralization and send resources to the local councils, which are the development engine. It's, it's not so. Power is being gradually uh, 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 um, centralized again. And it shouldn't be. And so citizens need to ask, citizens need to request, and more importantly, the person who will be taking leadership of this country should be able to stabilize the Leons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and we'll ask you, Sam, um, mm -hmm. you know, w w what are the critical issues? You've done the Citizens Manifesto. We don't know if they will align with um, what the politicians, the political parties will be doing. But what are the critical issues or the things you're looking forward to in whatever man manifesto will be coming out? So symbolically, we'll be presenting the Citizens Manifesto to APC today. Um, it's it's the, 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 the large group. Um, so we really want to see how the political party manifestos are in line with the citizens' manifesto. It's a proposal that we're sending to them. And I remember during the launch of the citizens' manifesto, the chair at the time, Omar Fofana, said, if I am contesting an election, I'll use this document and run with it because it's exactly what citizens want. It was surprising to see uh, citizens from across the country were saying, I have an issue with policing take them off, introduce traffic lights. And then some people were saying, you know, these people need water. They need electricity. And basically what the Citizens Manifesto is saying, if, you, if we get the, 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 the leadership that focuses on what citizens <coughs> want, we'll get electricity. So let's put the distractions aside. Because the meaning of power 
in Sierra Leone is largely about control, not about delivery of services. So normally what we ask for is how do we ensure that there's a total commitment to citizens. So all of those things, when you say, I'm going in for wealth, uh, say, declare your assets, it, it doesn't mean that electricity is not important or roads are not important, but it means we want you to have the right composed mentees to focus on the needs of citizens. So that's why um, in, the, in this week or in the coming week, uh, when the, immediately the manifestos are out, we're launching a, an app which we call SenseBoard. So SenseBoard will provide an opportunity to any Sierra Leonean with, with, with a handset, with a, it's a smartphone, to say, I want to see what APC has for me for healthcare. What is SLPP saying about the economy? You just speak to that and SenseBoard will say, this is what they, 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 tell, they told you. So political parties know that citizens uh, we'll be looking at the manifestos critically, and so we really want to see how we democratize manifesto conversation. So all of that, a link has been prepared. We'll dump all of those documents in, and it will be shared. It's really novel, uh, um, I mean, across Africa to see, um, especially young people that are mobile phone users. So you, you don't need, you need to read all the manifesto. Yeah. You just need to say, what is in SLPP's plan for foreign affairs? Or my mother is sick. I cannot afford a health care for the next five years. What is SLPP or APC saying? I mean, any party that develops manifesto, not just those two. Mm -hmm. What are they saying about health care that I can rely on? And we educate citizens on that so their vote becomes their life. So that you know that it's, I mean, your mendiness or timeliness are all important. But in the, in the end, it's about your mother's health yeah. or your own personal health or your own welfare, your employment. So there will be. And that's why we want political parties not to make hollow statements, not to make vague promises. Be concrete. So when you say road network, uh, a lot of people want to see, no, I'll make this road here. It, it's always useful to calculate if we have only 25% of the roads fixed. The next administration will say, no, I, I want to raise it up to, to 40% in, in five years. Because we keep struggling over limited sets of roads. So they make road na Kenima, they don't make road na Moyamba, yeah. but they don't make road na Makini, but everywhere in Sierra Leone should have roads. Yeah. So we need a, a regime that will say, uh, this is the budget that we have, this is the resource that we have, this is the amount of road that we can afford. And then we now discuss where should those roads go that should, will be critical for economic growth. So I think those are the things I will be looking at. Okay, um, we, 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 we are letting you guys go, but um, with, with the manifestos, if the ma manifestos are out, should we expect um, presidential debates um, to, to challenge those is issues? Absolutely. Um, I, I, I want to believe that um, the, the political leaders should be able to face the citizens and talk to them. And if, if I, you just brought another critical point, if we're going to the presidential debates, what would they be communicating without manifestos? So the manifestos are very key, both for the campaigning and equally so when eventually one person would have taken office. And in fact, when we have all of this, when we hear them during the presidential debates, there are some points that will also be able to take from one and push it to the other to say that this way this person is articulating how the economy would be fixed. Or for example, making sure that water is in the, in the, in the main uh, um, cities in Sierra Leone is very important. How, why shouldn't we run with this? So I think, yes, we should have the presidential debate. And there is um, the, 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 I mean, IGR, CGG, yeah. Sludge, and a number of other agencies are in the coalition that's organizing the presidential debate. Okay. And, and several unions would hear from us shortly. OK. Andrew, finally. Um, so I will just conclude by re reiterating that um, your vote is your life. Uh, it's critical that every citizen understands that, especially young people. You might have made up your mind for which party you support. I'm not saying move, but I'm just saying for in the interest of your life, if you want your life to improve, just release your mind. In the next 40 days, this is a moment of critical decision making for the country. So if you say I'm going to make my mind closed up, um, if you don't open up, you release your mind, you can be in that situation for God knows how long. 
So I think it's good when they say democracy, it's demos, the citizens, Kratos, authority. There is no better time for you to exercise that authority than having the right vote. So that's why manifestos are critical. It's, it makes us to have informed decisions about moving forward. It makes us citizens put to scale as to what they should choose and what they should not choose. And that's why political parties, as you develop their manifestos, do it right. I mean, as Marcella said, uh, we, we have similar problems, similar issues in the manifestos because the challenges are more or less the same. Yeah. So that's why we, what we really want to see are strategies. This is we, this, we, reducing the, the inflation to single digits, and this is how I do it. Uh, you, I know people will not be paying attention to such sophisticated conversations, but things around as basic as health here, fixing roads, uh, especially for those of us in governance, uh, police reform. Police reform is key. And when you, when, when you track the Afro barometer, I think trust in the police is now around 19%, quite about the lowest for the past 10 yeah. years. So whoever is taking this state, that critical trust, I see the police, they are doing quite a fine job, going to communities, trying to build trust, but we can only build trust when there is political will to have a civic-led policing. And the approaches to how we achieve that, I want to see that reflected in manifestos coming up. Okay, well. Thank you very thank much. You very thank much. you. Thank you. And Marcella, thank you for taking thank your time you to talk to us. We are coming now. We'll continue yes. this, you know. <laughs> exactly. It's your time. Yeah, it's your own time. We'll, we'll have more of civil society conversations and politic politicians as well. So um, I'm sure, and we, we, all, we are appreciative of it always when we call you. We missed you and glad you're back. <laughs> <Thank> so <laughs> we'll make use of your time. But well, thank you very much for joining us this All morning. Right.